Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, this next speaker um, will be so useful to you. Um, so uh, I just want to thank Mark Walker for joining us. Um, he is the FOIA coordinator for the New York Times um, in their Washington Bureau. Um, so we're very disappointed that we did not get to all be together in person because he would have been with us. Um, he also uh, is a previous fellow and he will be uh, in this year's Paul Miller class. Um, so we're very excited about that. And, um, and one of our current fellows uh, also works at um, a place where he cut his teeth uh, in Sioux Falls. Um, so Mark has been around and has um, a lot of experience to share with us. Uh, Mark, I'll let you uh, get started. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Mark Walker. I'm a reporter and FOIA coordinator in the Washington Bureau of the New York Times. Um, worked here, it's almost three years, uh, most of which has been spent in the house. Um, but uh, it's been a great three years here. And uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about a couple of things today. I'm going to talk FOIA and going to talk about uh, web scraping without coding, which is something I do a lot in sort of my data work and investigative work here at the Times. All right. So this is basic web scraping without programming. Um, so if you've ever heard about web scraping, you usually hear about Python or this like really elaborate code that needs to be written to sort of scrape data off of government websites. Um, but with sort of like the addition of like Google Sheets, now you can do sort of basic web scraping and get data into spreadsheets for you to do analysis on without having to do that. So what is web scraping? Um, I feel like everybody's done it before in one way, shape or form. So web scraping is just sort of like known as web data extraction. So it's the process of retrieving and scraping data off a website. So basically if you copy and paste information from a website, you're basically doing sort of like basic web scraping. So there's two types of scraping. There's um, extractors and crawlers. So extractors pulls data from like a single web page, whereas crawlers pulls data from multiple web pages. So if anybody's used the um, Wayback Machine, so which basically since the time of the internet has crawl, crawls basically the internet taking screenshots of every page, um, every web page that exists, that's a crawler. If you want to just keep track of one single page and pull data off that, that's an extractor. So we're gonna talk about understanding HTML. I usually like explain to people what HTML was, is if you had MySpace, and you had to like hook your MySpace up. Uh, we've all been there. We've all put our music on. We did our top friends. We had our design on. That's basically what HTML was and basically coding and scraping. And so basically that same concept of how we did that is how we're going to do like web scraping. We've all sort of like hit the accidental button on our laptops and we get this screen that I have on my right hand side showing up. And so that's basically the HTML of a website. Um, on the left is Olympic gold medals um, for every country in the world. And so uh, when you pull up the HTML behind the website, the portions I have highlighted here is what we're gonna kind of be working with today. So you'll see the first thing I have highlighted is called a table. So a table is pretty much self-explanatory. It's sort of like a spreadsheet, a small organized with headers, with rows, um, table of contents and a spreadsheet on a website. And so when you look in the HTML right here on this Wikipedia page, you'll see it has table, class, and then it has a little description of what's in there. So it says it's sortable. It says that this is indeed a table. The style is in margin top zero and it closes out with these brackets as table. These two things right here are really important when sort of like reading through, and we're actually gonna go through and kind of do some hands-on work so you guys can practice this a little bit. Um, but this is something I do on a regular basis because a lot of times when I come across government data and I try and copy it 
into a spreadsheet ends up being a little wonky. It won't paste in right. It won't paste in even. And so I end up spending hours and hours of cleaning up the data before I'm ever even able to do an analysis on it for any sort of investigative work that I'm doing. Um, so this is a this saves me a lot of time and it's, it's fairly easy to sort of get. So the HTML contact is sort of wrapped in tags. Those are these two things that we see right here. This table right here, this table right here, those are tags. You'll see this as whether it's a table or a list, you'll see this wrapped around any sort of chart or table that you or a piece of data that you want to deal with. So there are a lot of different types of tags um, in addition to list and table. And I have a hyperlink here if you want to really dig in and dive into what those are. So first formula that we're going to talk about, um, and it's the one I use the most frequently, is called import HTML. So this only works with Google Sheets. It doesn't work with Excel at all. Um, so basically, this is a formula that will allow you to examine the position of a table or a list inside of a website HTML and import it into a Google spreadsheet with that exact same format. So it'd be clean, um, it'd be concise, and it'd be like ready to go once it's sort of imported into it. So this formula starts out with a equal sign, and then you type out import HTML. Then the next thing, when you type this in, Google Sheets is very smart, but one thing I would caution is to have control over everything you do because programs like Google Sheets like to take guess. So you don't want anything to take a guess for you and you to do a function or something that you're not authorizing it to do. So do everything manually. Um, so once you write out impure HTML and do the open parentheses, you'll see Excel start to ask you, do you mean this, 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 or this? I mean, Google Sheets. And you just want to type this all out. The first thing you're going to need is the URL, so whatever page that the data exists on. You want to copy it, you want to put it in this first position wrapped in quotes. So you're going to do your query after that, and then you're going to do your index. And your index is basically like what position um, you believe that the data is in. And we can talk about figuring that out as we walk through a few examples. So we'll break this down just a little bit one more time. So it's pulling the URL. And so the URL is the page to examine which one you want to do. The HTTP colon forward slashes. You want to make sure you get the full web page in there. You don't want to, like you're scraping data off the CDC's website. You don't want to put in cdc.gov you want to put in the full link to where that data is located because you want to tell this piece of this script that you're going to write that I want the data housed on this page. And then we're going to go down and tell it which position, what type of table, what type of data this is. Is it listed in a table? Is it listed in a list? And then we're going to say what position it is. So you want to make sure you get the very specific page that the data is located on. Query. We're either going to write list or table in this for this exercise, and we'll be able to tell by examining sort of the HTML and then index. So one of the things about the index sort of in like website building, it doesn't start at one, it starts at zero. And a lot of times it's sort of just trial and error, figuring out what the position is, because not all the times in the HTML, it will tell you which position that the charter table is listed in. So sometimes it's just playing around with it or like visually trying to eyeball how many charts, how many tables, how many lists are on this website. And basically from there, importing the number um, or just trying the number until the data fully imports. So this is an example of a list. So IRE has, we post jobs, um, different sort of investigative jobs across the country. If I wanted to scrape this and bring it into a spreadsheet, I would list this, I would scrape this exact URL and I would put this as a list 
and then I will copy it down because it's the only thing on this page. I would copy it down and it will import right into Google Sheets. So for this, just sort of like a step-by-step -step visualization before we try it ourselves. Um, so I'd right click, I'd hit expect. And when I hit inspect, it should pull up this. And I can see there's a section right here. It says header, H3 class, and I can see right here, title and job listings. So this says it's a table, unless we change this around, um, but it copies in as a list and I'll show you why. And so you just sort of eyeball this and you make sure you've notated everything. And if you hover over it, it will highlight the areas in the HTML. So to sort of give you a sense and idea of what line of the code that you should be working with and paying attention to. So then we would just do that import HTML. Um, we would do that URL. We would do that table. It would be position zero because it's the only thing on the website. And then we would copy it over. This is another example from the IHS website, which I did a lot of reporting on them during the pandemic and they would regularly update sort of their data online. Um, as nice as this looks, it doesn't pace well into Excel. So I always have to scrape the data off of their website. If I want to do sort of an analysis on sort of like the positivity rates um, and comparing test this, you know, tests that were done to negative tests, tests that were done to positives, I would scrape this into a Google Sheet and I would do an analysis on it. So same practice import HTML, do the, put the URL in there, put it as a table, put its position in there and do it. There's some other formulas within side of Google Sheets, import HTML, import range, import feed, import data um, that we can talk about if anybody has questions. Um, but for now, we want to focus on the import HTML. So I'm going to stop my screen and load up something. And uh, everybody can open up a blank Google Sheet. We'll actually work through a few examples so you guys can sort of get the hang of this. So let me pull up a Google Sheet and then I'll reshare my screen. All right. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Great. Move this out the way. So I want to pick an example I made my students at GW use um, instead of the <laughs> one we showed in the example. So I want everybody to go to Google and I want you guys to Google uh, last meal for death row inmates. And so when you Google that, you should come across a Wikipedia page that says last meal and I want you guys to open this so this is kind of a project i've made uh some of my students work on when i was teaching them web scraping was um all the countries in the world who have the death penalty um, that allow you to have last meals they track them and so for the u.s we track um, not every state allows you to request a, death, a last meal, but a lot of states do. I think recently we learned that Texas stopped allowing people to request last meal because I think one or two people just sort of like, they ordered something and then the day came and they decided that they just weren't really that hungry, which would seem understandable, but the Texas legislature said, you know what, we can't waste food around here, so we're not gonna allow this anymore. Um, that's something that we discovered in class. But one of the things that we did is we scraped um, sort of this data in from for the US and sort of did an analysis on it to see like what sort of stood out. Um, what they be race, year, states, um, types of meals, method of execution. What we so the only way to get this into a usable format was to scrape it in there. So I would have this website out. So I want you guys to go to your spreadsheet. 
So we want to import this in. So we want to start at column 1A. And then so I would do equal sign import. And just like I mentioned earlier, Excel, Google Sheets likes to take guesses for you. So you don't want to allow Google Sheets to make a guess. So it's guessing right now from the fact that I typed in equals import that I want to do an equals import XML, but I'm interested in an HTML. So I would type the rest of this out, HTML. Open parentheses. One of the helpful parts about Google Sheets is it does give you a basic explanation of what you need each time you do it. So you'll make sure that you have every piece of this function correct. So to scrape this table in, we're gonna open, we're gonna do some open quotes. We're gonna come up to this page and we're gonna copy this whole URL in here. So then we're gonna close those quotes on. And we're gonna break everything up in this function with a comma, okay? So the next thing we need to do is look at this and decide whether it's a table or a list. So let's all go over to back to our spreadsheet. We're gonna scroll down. We're gonna bring in this US table because we're only gonna look at this. So we're gonna right click within this table and we're going to inspect it. So when inspect it, we're going to pull up that sort of HTML behind the website. And we're just sort of kind of going to look through it. So I'm going to kind of scroll through to see what we're looking for. Just sort of reading through all of this, clicking in. Okay, we can click in and see that, okay, we do have some stuff lighting up. This might be where our data is being located and being housed. This is our first header. So I'm looking through this, it's really not giving me an idea of whether this is a table or a list, but based on just sort of dealing with data and eyeballing it, I'm going to assume it's a table. If it's not a table and it, the function doesn't work, it's going to give me sort of the error message that says it's not a table and I'll just go in and I'll make the adjustment for there. But we're going to sort of highlight throughout this and as I highlight, it will pull up um, some of the different parts. So I'm going to go back to my function and I'm going to open it up again. I'm going to type in table. Put another comma, then we're gonna go back here and we're going to sort of, sorry, this little thing up top is in the way. And close this out. And we just sort of look at this. We have the table of contents here, which is a table, which is a list. Um, we see some other tables. So we're just gonna to have to kind of work through and starting at zero and figure out, okay, how far down is the data set that we want. And so I'm looking at this, I guess that's zero, one, two, three for Canada. I'm gonna guess the US is four based on eyeballing this. And so I'm gonna put in the number four and I'm gonna close this up, okay? Let's see, forgot the space. Got a couple extra things in here. Just got to clean this up. So it should, your formula at the end, and I will zoom in a little bit, should look like this. I was able to get it, but I got the same thing when I put in zero instead of four. There so. You got, did you get an error message when you put in zero instead of four? No, I got the same output. That I'm just wondering if there's a reason that zero and four are giving me the same thing. Yeah, I, okay. same here. I, I, I had the same, same problem. Hmm. 
well, let's change this up and figure this out. Okay, so two gets me. So I think um, what might be happening is if you clicked on the North America tab and you put in the URL with the ID, so like the hashtag that says North America after it, it might be counting that as the first element because you have the specific URL that takes you straight to the North America table. That would be my guess. I'm gonna try that and see and Hmm, that's interesting. It's just like the defaulted table for the first table might be North America. And it might be North America because we have the most. And so since we're the most prominent, unfortunately, the most prominent country in using some of these, it's probably the most viewed and used portion of this web page. So it's going to default as sort of like number one. But if we put in any of the numbers, so let's say we want to change and say we didn't want to look at the US, but we wanted to look at Canada. If we put in a three instead of the zero or four, it only brings that up. It only pulls in candidates. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. okay. So one rule of thumb that I always use when I'm scraping data off a website is I don't work off sort of the original copy. So this has the formula in it. So if I try and do any sort of functions or pivot table or anything off of this while this is still active, it will break. So what I usually do is copy the data, like I'll name the sheet. Scraped data. And then I'll name this sheet working data. I always like to name my documents and data working. Um, so when you paste it in, you want to only paste in with the values only. The reason why you want to paste in with just the values is you want to strip that function from behind the data. So if I paste it in here with values only, if I hover back over A1, that formula is gone now. So now that, that formula is gone, I'm able to do analysis and do work on this information. But as long as this is still in here, this function here, it won't allow me to do any sort of data analysis. It won't allow me to make a pivot table. It may break. Um, in some cases, if you does allow you to do it, it will screw your whole data up and you don't want that to happen. Okay, let's try a couple more examples just to make sure that we get um, familiar with this. You can go to IRE's website, go to the job center, we're gonna scrape that next. Is everybody good, everyone here? So same thing, we're going to let's copy this URL. I'm gonna name this sheet, uh, straight data IRA. It gives me that many characters, there you go. So we're gonna do equals on import HTML. Open parentheses again. Paste our URL in there. Okay. 
I'm going to come back to this page, right click it. I'm going to inspect the page. Sort of hover over it. Examine the code so we can see if we can get an idea of what kind of table this is. It's a header. So usually I spend a lot of time scrolling through this to sort of figure out, okay, where's the element? Where is it going to tell me what I need to know? Oh, we know this is a table, so we can skip through this. So go back and we're going to just write table in because we know it's the table from the function I gave you guys earlier. It's the only table on this web page. So my assumption is it's going to be zero. And so it's going to be the starting file on this web page. And so I'm going to hit zero. Delete that quote because I keep doing that. And we don't want that in there. And so we're just going to stop and make sure everything was good. The double quotes are on the web page, the double quotes are on the table, and the position the web page is the table of lists is located is zero because there's nothing else on this page. There's no other additional piece of data here. And we are now that it looks good. Let's see, it says import content is empty. Try one. Let's see. It is a list. I knew it was a list. I don't know why they told me it wasn't. So when I was reviewing this and just getting it ready, I was talking to an old colleague of mine who was like, no, the website's a table. I was like, no, I swear it's a list. He's like, nah, it's a table. And I'm like, okay. And it is not, it is a list. So we're gonna change that to list. And when we put in zero, the first thing that pulls up is sort of the resources actually. So it's gonna pull from this list across the top. So we don't want that because that's not what we're interested in. So we're gonna keep going. Nope, there's another list on the page, but that's not what we're looking for. And this is sort of like the trial and error. A lot of times with this it's kind of one of the downsides to using the scraping without coding is sometimes you kind of have to do this trial and error to figure out where the list is located that you wanna work on. not pulling that one in. That should pull that in. Mark, in the meantime, do we want to open it up to questions? Sure, that would be great. Awesome. Um, does anyone have, oh, <laughs> Jacob already, go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, just real quick. I mean, I'm wondering if um, if it's either a list or a table, could you sort of, I mean, could you just sort of do a trial and error and and not sort of um, spend the time to go in and examine the HTML and figure it out and just sort of like, I'm going to guess this is a table if you have trouble, you know? Yeah, honestly, that's what I do a lot of times. Okay. <laughs> is I guess and I eyeball it and say, does this look like a table? Does this look like a 
list and then sort of eyeball it and go back and forth and just say, okay, this is it. So actually our IRB website's a little broken right now. So sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of usually how I eyeball it and do it. Um, is sort of look and say, this looks like a list of things. And it's usually just kind of going straight up and down. If it looks like a table, I take a guess and usually like work through trial and error to save me the time of it's trying to inspect the HTML. I, I don't know if I'm a little too early, but I'd love to know about crawling, like doing, if there's like a list of jobs, like like more than one page for jobs or something like that, or like the Wikipedia page, if it's like you have to like go through, loop through the page. Um, Okay, if you have to like loop through the pages and get like multiple, like, I will include an example in there because I have done that recently um, and sort of pull that in there or keep running it. It's a little more complicated of a formula, but I will send that along um, because it does work. Yeah. Hey, Mark, uh, Joe yeah. Sneed, the Argus leader. Uh, good to see you and thanks for doing this. Um, so is it always going to be a list or a table? And uh, secondly, do government agencies sometimes post data uh, and encrypt it in such a way that, that this isn't possible to do? The, it's usually going to be a list or a table for basic government websites. Um, but the only way that this wouldn't work is it's put behind sort of a like firewall or a paywall. And for those type things, you usually can try and guess around and break them to pull all the data in one place and then sort of try and scrape it or to just kind of copy and paste it. A lot of like paywall searches, if you use an asterisk or something, a symbol like that, it will tell the system that you want to select all and it'll pull up all the results rather than like whether pulling it up by alphabetical order or last name or first name. But other than that, if it's not behind a paywall or some sort of firewall, you can scrape the data right off. Um, hey, Mark, uh, Nick hey. Wooten with the uh, Ledger Inquirer in Columbus, Georgia. I had a question for you. Um, one of the tools last night that one of our speakers mentioned was a data miner, a plugin that can help with website scraping. Do you have any recommended plugins you use or anything else that would make scraping easier? For like importing data, I would use this. One thing about data crawling, I found this out the hard way, was that it will scrape everything and then it's gonna give it to you and it's all gonna be on your computer. And that's when that becomes a problem because a lot of times I've done that data scraper to pull up files or to track like DOJ sentencing or DOJ convictions. And it would continuously give me these files over and over and over again. And then until like I started getting hit with all these error messages on my computer that my computer was full because it just it was just with too many files and some of the files were massive. Um, so a lot of the times I just use that one. But if I want to, there's like a a web page, and I run into this sometimes with the work I do, where there's a lot of data files. And I want to scrape them all at the same file at the same time. There is this program I use called Download Them All, which will basically let you see take every single list table right click download photo and it will take everything and it will download everything at the same time into one zip file and we'll let you use it um i've used import html a bunch uh i used it for insiders uh when we were updating all of the olympics uh metal coverage uh and i wrote a little thing to update it every couple minutes or hour or so one thing I did run into, and I'm curious if you had any advice, was after having it update every X number of minutes, I was IP banned from the Olympics website. Um, so I was wondering if you had any tips on just like, do certain websites have this, is there a standard for like, oh, how many queries per hour or for certain websites, or is it just sort of the whim of the web administrator? There's like, I try and make it a little slow mm -hmm. because I don't want to get in, I don't want to get banned or like get flagged for hacking, which happens sometimes. And it's just like, like if I download files or scrape data off the FBI's website, that's kind of the last website I want to get flagged on. 
And so I usually just like take it very slow. Um, and if I'm not, if it's not something that I constantly need to update, I'll just go in and manually do it rather than like kind of have it, you know, set to be autonomous because there are, the government agencies have realized that this is kind of a tool that journalists use and they consider it hagging, it's not, but they would like to label it that, but that's something to sort of be cognizant of, um, of just sort of like, if you can do it manually sometimes, just to sort of break up the pattern, I would do that. Lisa. And um, is there any cases where scraping, because I, I keep seeing like articles about like what's scraping is illegal, but like that's just like, is that just like lies or like, I was just wondering like, when is it like not supposed to be used? <laughs> It's not illegal. It's just, you can, it's illegal to break somebody's website. Like if you don't know how to scrape and you sort of like, with this tool, you won't break anyone's website. Um, but if you kind of got a little fancy and added some Python in there, you, it is illegal to break like the CDC's website or like the CIA's website or, you know, something like that. And if you break their website, they're gonna be really pissed and like make a whole thing out of it because they have to go fix it. And I guess that's the cases. There have been some cases where there have been some people who tried to scrape government websites end up breaking them in the process. And then you can't really say it's not you because they kind of have your IP address. And then it's like, yeah. But that, that's mostly the case. But outside of that, scraping is totally fine. Are there certain websites like the URLs that don't work in the function? Like do you come across any that just don't work and give me error messages? Nope, for the most part, they all work, except for again, those ones that are just kind of behind those paywalls or those sort of search engine walls, like in Pacer. Like if I tried to pull up Pacer and got to the search page or even got to a list, that may not work because it's kind of got some firewall protections on it, but anything else that doesn't have that level of protection on it works just fine. Okay. 